Greetings, friends, and welcome to a very interesting prop build. Well, it's a somewhat authentic wagon wheel. You see, I've wanted to build a hearse for a long time, uh, like a full-size hearse. But most of the time when you do these types of large props, you end up with weight concerns. And, you know, normally the, the modus operandi is to build these out of plywood. And while that works fantastic, I really like the way uh, an actual proper built wheel looks. It really leads to the authenticity of the piece you're working on. So anyways, this is the adventure we're going on today. You're going to need a bandsaw and a router to build this because it is a pretty complicated pre bit of uh, kit that you're going to have to come up with to make this. But don't be intimidated. If if you buy a bandsaw, you'll never regret it. It's one of the best tools ever. Anyways, first thing we're going to get into is cutting the fellows out of a 2x6 and we're going to continue on from there. Uh, and I think I mentioned it later, but regardless, template down there. Enjoy. Now, right away, we're going to be getting into doing the fallows, I think it is. Anyways, the first thing you're going to do is on the website down below, you're going to find the template for the 48-inch wheel. It might include another one at a later date, but for now, it's just going to be the 48-inch wheel because it's a lot of calculations to get this thing to work. So now what we're going to do is I use quarter inch MDF or, you know, hardboard. I spray sprayed the uh, template onto here, glued it on, and then cut it out with my bandsaw. Now, when you cut it out, leave it a little tiny bit so you can sand it right to the precision of where you need it. That way, you know, you're not going to accidentally, because a bandsaw can cut jagged depending on the blade you have in it. And I did this so I have a nice smooth template. I really suggest you do this out of the stone board right away because you're going to be doing this a lot, especially if you're doing four wheels all at once. Now, when this was all glued and done, I took a knife and I cut down the two vertical lines there and there. And what it did is just give me my permanent spots for where the spindles uh, attach to or the spokes attach to. Then all you pretty much do is using a two by six because this is built for this template's built for using a two by six and getting four follows out of each two by six, eight foot two by six that is. So all they did is put it down and do yourself a favor and clamp this before you draw around it because you don't want it to move and because if it does it causes major problems going forward. So once you've traced around it, at the top where those lines are, I just put a little nick here, here, here. And then after I use a ruler to carry right through. You'll see in a moment why I carry those lines right through. Now, we go past Mr. Router, who is actually all set up for doing this. Now, using my just cutoff saw, wherever it happens to be. Oh, there it is. I set the depth to slightly less. These are going to be half inch depth. The, the your total final depth is about half an inch. So what I did is I set my saw to about three-eighths of an inch. So it ended up just a little bit proud because after the router is what's going to clean this whole thing up for us. Then once you got to that, using just a chisel, you knock those pieces out. They actually crack relatively easy, you can see, and they come on out. And you're going to be left with a whole bunch of pieces in there. And, you know, when you cut here... Once again, don't go to the line. You want to make sure that the router template is what will take out this final bit. Now, if you don't have a router, go get one. <laughs> but if you really don't have a router, you can do this full cut with the, with the circular saw and then spend more time cleaning up this base with a chisel. It's all on you. Now, here you can see what it looks like after I ran the router through it. But now you say, but Sawin, how did you keep that so nice and, you know, square on there without bouncing all over the place like a router likes to do? Well, that's where this comes in. This is a piece of three-quarter inch wood with a template on it that I use for making these lines. And you can see here, this one's all set up for the cut. And then all I do is I line it up on the inside to the pencil marks. Then taking the router, which is here, and... This is a bushing that allows me to pretty much run the top of the template here. And then this bottom piece here will cut everything out, everything out down below it. 
Now, this is the most time consuming part because once you're done here, I do these first so the router and my saw has something big to land on. You can cut these after this is cut out, but I don't suggest it. It's, it life is so much easier when you do it this way. And then after that, we are going to have the finished fallow and you're going to need per wheel, what is it, 12 of them. So I'm gonna get cutting and I'll see you in about three and a half weeks. All right, we're going to make the spokes now and we're gonna be making 12 of these per wheel. So if you're doing all four wheels at once, you're gonna be making 48 of these and you want to pretty much make sure that you can streamline this as much as absolute possible. Now, first of all, you're gonna need inch and a half by inch and a half stock. I just take a two by four and cut it to the inch and a half wide and I have my exact spokes that I need. And now we need to have these tenons done on each end because this one goes into the outside of the wheel and this one goes into the center hub. We have a bit more to do after on these, but for now, what we'll do is we'll just straight forward go here. So the first thing you need to know is that top tenon is an inch and a half. And then the bottom tenon is just over two and a half inches. This will sit proud outside of the wheel slightly. and We're going to sand it down after. Now, how I did this is I measured this first and then using my radial arm, I set it up here and then I brought my saw through and that blade is set to be a, be a quarter inch deep. Take it, rotate it, cut, 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 finish, put it off to the side. And what you end up with is a nice clean cut here. And then we'll take it to the bandsaw to finish it off. Now on the bandsaw, you see that I've got this big piece of plywood here clamped on. And what I've done is I put this to a quarter of an inch uh, away. So when this goes through, it will cut the quarter inch. And since we previously cut, those cuts there. You can do both these cuts on the bandsaw, but I just like doing the other one, the, uh, the square on the radial arm, because I have it. You can do it on the bandsaw as well. So what you'll do is you'll pretty much just bring that in, cut it, flip it, cut it, and just do the exact same thing and go through and oh, that, that, that's got a bit of tightness there. Uh, anyways, probably just because it caught the extra blade. Then when you're done, quickly spin it again and run it all through the blade again just to make sure that it's nice and clean because sometimes this causes the blade to deflect ever so slightly. Not a huge deal. So once you've done that, set up the same thing over there. But note, this is 17 inches. This has to be 17 inches. So no matter what you do, cut one end, measure 17 inches, and then set it up for the other end because this part here has to be 17 inches. You're gonna to run into a lot of problems if you don't do that. Make 12 of these and I'll be back again. All right, the center hub template once again on that file. If you downloaded it for the other pieces, which are over there, you will know what this part is. Anyways, so the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna print out two of them this time because you kind of need to have it as a double set. This one is for the routing and this one is just for drawing. And you see, I only knocked out two of these because then they become like my registration. So what I do is I take the piece of wood, you put, let me help if it's actually in the camera, you put this on, and then what I did is I just drew around this onto the piece of uh, two by six, and then once that's done, I was able to clamp this, actually I didn't clamp this down. This is the part that I clamped down in a roundabout way. Oh, it's very interesting. Why is that completely? Oh, because I'm a doofus. Anyway, <laughs> that line there, not that line. And I did that. So when you see here, this is bigger because I wanted some landing for the router to sit onto. And then the, you set it up like this. So when you go do your route that everything works out perfect. Now, these screws here are countersunk and I just use drywall screws because you have to imagine that the rest of the two by six is still there. These go in and they hold it down, but it puts it down below the level of the router. And then all I do is I clamp here onto the actual, uh, when I'm holding everything in place. This actually worked nice because this was a full board and I did this all while it was attached. So I didn't need to clamp this. And anyways, once this is all screwed down, you just use your router after clearing out these with the saw like I did on the fallows. Remember how I showed you cut out most of the material? Do the same thing here. It just makes it easier on the router. And oh, I had some fun. I, I'm still dealing with it. 
when I was working with my router, for some reason it decided to change the depth of the cut by an eighth of an inch and I didn't notice it. And I built two full of these and realized that the route was too shallow, was too deep and it was messing everything up half inch. These are supposed to be half an inch deep match up so those fit into it. It was painful to have to go back and see that I finished two of these and the depth was too much. It made me cry a little bit. <laughs> So, when you get all these things done, just before you start routing, make sure you check the depth of the router to make sure you're doing the right depth. If not, you will end up very, very upset like I was. Anyways, that will allow you to do this. You're going to need four of these. And the one thing, just give me a second, got to reach in behind there. The one thing that you do have to keep in mind is do not use the rough edge of this two by six you need to square it off you need to get it to the point where it's like this nice and smooth because these need to combine very cleanly together because you're going to be gluing them and this becomes your center hub and then what happens is once all of your uh spokes are in this comes in completely opposite of the actual where where the first two went and what it does, it gives you strength as a laminate. And then you see that this one clips right over top to create the central hub. Which is pretty darn cool, isn't it? Anyways, I'll be back once I start getting... I just have to go cut this center axle out. I'm going to pretty much say that you cut this center axle to the size that you need. I'm using a galvanized metal fence post for my axle. So I'm cutting this at two inches. If you use a fence post, like a wood one, you need, you need to go with three and a half, depending on what you use for your axle. I'll go put on multiple sizings, and I'll mark them on this template when you see it, so you know what size axle you need to cut. Anyways, I'm going to go do that, and I'll be back. And good morning, after a night of glue drying. You see that the outer wheel's assembled now. I'm going to go over how you do this. I wanted to record it, but once I started gluing this thing, I didn't want to stop because the problems can be a lot bigger than they appear. I'll just go over how I did it so you can follow along if you so choose to. So first of all, with the template, you'll see that there's little dots on it. All I did is I used that and I put it onto the final pink template. It's funny, the templates changed from the beginning because I needed to add these dots. And what these are is this is where the dowels are going to go through. And I'm going to lose my glue. So... What you're going to do is, right off the bat, you're going to mark all of these fallows with the dots for where the dowels go through. The dowel option is there if you want to do it. If you don't do it, that's fine. But these will add so much strength to this, it is absolutely unheard of. It takes a little bit longer because it's going to be a lot of, you know, drilling through. But it's the most authentic way to do it, really. But if not... You can just put screws through and make sure that they don't pop through the other side and then put this to the inside and it should be good. Now, this is a Forstner bit. And what I did is before I put the screw in, I dug a small spot. That way, once this screw goes in, it doesn't mess with where my center is going to be. All I'll do is I'll put my drill in there, match that up to there, and then I'll continue on through. But Forstner bits are great, but they don't... They dig decently, but not super well. So I'm using a 5 8 inch spade bit to dig the hole initially, and then this will clean it up after. But I suggest what you do is when you're going through, drill through to the point where that point comes through the other side, and then flip the thing over and use your forcing bit to finish it. It'll just leave you a nice clean hole on both sides. Now, and then what I did is using that glue, which I'm going to grab here, this glue, it's a polymer, not a, it's a urethane glue, it's waterproof. So this thing, even if it gets a little bit of weather, will actually not look too bad and won't, it won't split on you. So now that this is dry, it is, it's never going anywhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this over uh, using my sander. I'm going to get these joints down as nice as possible. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just get it as best as you can. Uh, same with the inside, and then once I've got this ring all done, I'm going to be doing a route on the inside, because I think it looks pretty, and I can, so there. After I put in all these dowels, anyways, I'll be back once you're done. Oh, and you'll see that 
you'll see that some of my spots here are slightly misaligned. Don't be too stressed if they misalign a little bit. You can modify your spindles so they fit into these when you go. The insides are the more important ones because that's where your strength and all your rest comes from. Anyways, I'll be back. All right, we're gonna quickly go over the extra steps I've done here. Like I said, these are the dowels that I've put through and they've all been put in now and they're all set. I did a little bit of sanding on the outside to change some of these profiles that match up with each other just to make them look a little bit better. Now, your spokes, you can leave them square or you can be like me and want everything fancy. So I went through and I routed four sides of it and it's not necessary. It's 100% up to you on how pretty or rudimentary you want this wheel to look. But anyways, this is the stage where we're going to go through and we're going to fit everything and make sure everything's looking good. So you're going to put all these pieces in and then what I suggest you do just to be safe, take a ruler and measure the height of all of these all the way around and make sure that you don't have any that are high. Like this one looks a tiny bit high. You don't want that. Then after that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to countersink a screw here and then screw this in after I put the urethane glue on the underside and just all through here. So when this thing locks up, it's going to lock up solid. Anyway, so I'm going to go through and I'm going to get all that done. And the next time you see it, this will most likely be attached to that. And I'll let you know if I ran to anything different. Oh, just as a quick extra note, these right here, when you put them in, round the edges of them just slightly. And don't do what I said on the first one where you go through and you come up from the bottom. I did that and ended up busting out a big chunk of one of my uh, fallows. So here, what you're gonna do is you're just going to use the spade bit, go right through, but put a piece of wood on the underside. So when the spade bit goes through, it goes into the wood underneath and then follow it up with the forcing bit to get a nice clean hole. Anyways, I will see you in a bit and hopefully everything goes according to plan. Now we're just about finished here. And as you can see that I've added an additional circle onto the top and the bottom. The bottom one's already in place. And all I did is I did the same, using the same template as this. I just did it and then I routed the circle. And then what you wanna do is just wanna pre-fit your piece to make sure that it sits on there decently. You can have a little bit of wiggle room, but don't go too, too much, you know, hopefully you can get it close. And then what you wanna do is you want to, when you put these on, you want to oppose the seams. So you'll be coming here and you'll be opposing it there. I'm gonna glue this on and then I'm gonna put a couple screws in because there's a final piece, which I still have to go route, which goes right onto the top like that. And that will finish the central hub of that wheel. As you can see, that gives almost, gosh, what is that? Three, six, seven and a half inches of support on that axle. I think it's more than enough and it'll distribute the weight beautifully. Anyways, I'm gonna go route this and I'll show you the final product. See any of you? We're all done. And I really dig how this thing looks. It's got such an authentic feel to it. It's almost as authentic as you can get, really. Yes, this is a bit more complicated in the sense that you do need a bandsaw. But if you do with this jigsaw, you have to contact me and I am going to, I'll send you something. If you do this all with a jigsaw, I will totally, because I know how much work would be involved here. Now you can see here how the center axle literally just slides right through which is good because this is going to be how the, I can't keep it in. That's how smooth that is. I can't keep that in place. And this will take the weight of whatever prop you ever throw at it. I, I, I don't have any ways of testing it. I just have know that the construction alone with all this pe pegged outside radius will hold almost anything. Anyways, I can ramble on all day, as you know. Thanks for hanging out. And I hope you enjoyed this really interesting build of a wagon wheel. I have to build three more of these for whatever project I want to do. Really want to build a hearse, but for years, I haven't been able to build a hearse because I didn't have a wheel that I liked that would support the weight without having a center support underneath the hearse. Well, this is kind of overkill, but that's me. Anyways, thanks for hanging out. A big thanks to my patrons who have uh, helped me out a ton. This is actually recorded using a microphone that they helped pay for. So thank you, my patrons. You guys are fantastic. Uh, my subscribers, you guys are awesome. I'm nearing 2,000. Well, depending on when you watch this video, it might be higher. It might be lower. If it's lower, I got serious problems. And a uh, big thank you to all my viewers who come by and watch all the craziness that I get into each week. 
well, <laughs> this has been a little bit more than a week because lots of on the go. Regardless, thanks for hanging out and catch you on the next one and wait until I wait until you see what I get into next.